What's up everybody? Chad here. Ryan here. We're back at it again. This is a double header because we have missed you guys last week and we apologize for that. But we have an extra spectacular show. We have last week and this week the comic books on the shelves that Ryan and I both like. Wednesday Warriors, we don't grab everything. We just grab the books that appeal to us, the books we're reading. We take some risks and we share our thoughts and feelings, mostly spoiler free with you guys, so you can head to your LCS and pick up the books that interest you as well. Exactly. Uh, that's basically the premise. Pretty much covered everything. Um, just on last week, very, very briefly, um, with Chad working and me at college, setting up a time is much more difficult, um, and I don't have a car anymore, so it was kind of the perfect storm. And we last week, there was very few books, so it would have been a shorter yeah. Wednesday Warriors to begin with, so we just figured, all right, Let's just combine the two, have one big weekend. Um, yeah, and just to address another some channel stuff, there's going to be uh, some, maybe a movie review coming soon. Mm -hmm. We're planning on seeing Venom this weekend. Um, the Batman trailer dropped, and it was just... I've seen it over 40 times now. Um, I spend no, nothing, I do nothing but watch it. But uh, <laughs> because this is a longer episode, I cried during the, well, during the first time I saw it. Um, almost passed out, but I, we get to talk about it all day. Um... Yeah, so it's, it's 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 a really big Wednesday Warriors, and uh, this is going to be more podcast style than our yeah. typical ones of just running down the list. We're just going to sit, have a conversation, catch up, catch up in the world of comics, and just, yeah, so uh, not a little bit atypical, but yeah. fun nonetheless. So let's just jump into it. So this week, do you want to run through all the books we got? Like, you know, we'll show them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, so yeah, we'll run through them. We got uh, May's book by Jeff uh, Lemire. Uh, yeah, so Gunslinger Spawn by uh, Todd McFarlane and Brett Booth. The Amazing Spider-Man 76 by Zeb Wells and Patrick Gleason. Mm -hmm. Iron Man 13 by Christopher Cantwell and Cafu. Uh, Catwoman number 36 by Rom V. Batman Urban Legends by a bunch of people. Uh, the Flash 775 by Jeremy Adams. Superman and the Authority number 404 by Grant Morrison. Batman the Imposter is Sus uh, by Matson Tomlin. Um, Superman, Son of Kal-El, number four. Nightwing, or Fear State Nightwing, number 85. By Tom Taylor. Uh, Justice League, Last Ride, number six. And Catwoman, Lonely City, by Cliff Chiang. Book one. Yeah. So, a lot of books. Um, we usually give a pretty, spoiler-free, but pretty in-depth thing. Some of the books we might briefly touch on, whereas some of them we might have long conversations, just because mm -hmm. of the length of this video alone. So, let's just jump in with the indie books. None for me. Uh, no Marvel, even. All DC. So, uh, yeah. Jed, take it away with May's book. So, I am still reading May's book by Jeff uh, Lemire. Um, this is number two. I believe there's going to be five total. Um, don't quote me on that, though. Mm -hmm. I'm not completely sure. Um, Jeff actually draws the art as well as writes the story. Interesting. Um... And this is a very depressing book. I mean, just look at the art style. It's bleak. It's drab. The only time we see art is, or color is in reds, we'll see. In this case, red of an IV. Uh, and the red of this string from a sweater. Um, but basically, May's book follows a man grieving over the loss of his daughter, like, ten years in the past. And it still haunts him. He's um he's like a a construction inspector, so he inspects construction sites, and he's just sad all the time. He's got this wicked beard. He <laughs> runs into his ex wife in this in this, and she oh, says wow. like, "Will, when's the last time you shaved?" Like, so you know he he he's not trying to be a hipster or anything. He's, he's just, just has given up and is just letting it all grow out and um is it an accurate depiction of like depression though like, yeah is it, it is it's it's it shows isolation it, it's really slow it takes its time like here we have a whole page of, of him just knocking on someone's door mm -hmm. um wow and you know Lemire's art isn't perfect it's not but it doesn't need to be and that makes it a lot more personable it, it, it fits yeah. the story really well um he draws he draws it well enough where you can see people's emotions but he draws them real in a really real way like the every every page will have like they'll have a different expression and they almost look a little like different people uh just cuz he'll move you know maybe their eyebrows or their eyes a little bit um yeah but i mean this is just a sad book um, I'm really enjoying it, though. <laughs> um, it is slow, and uh, it feels like we're just getting into the story. The previous issue was more of just setup. 
There's a mystery involved here, a maze, if you will, that Will needs to sort through. Um, and, oh, wow. like, we'll, we'll see how it goes, but it is a very intense, lonely story, um, but it, I'm hoping it, you know, I'm hoping that this man gets through his loss and is able to recover. That would be, that would be it. really, really, it, at, at the end of the, you know, this, this series, this mini series here, it's just, <laughs> he um, doesn't get over yeah, it. He doesn't get over it. <laughs> every day I will wake up with this pain and it just ends. But I know you were a huge, huge fan of the first issue. Mm -hmm. How does it stack up? Does it, like, is it... You can't really judge a series by the first... <clears throat> we pretty much have a metric where it's three issues... You get three issues, and nobody really can fuck up the first three issues. Yeah. But after that, when the story's in full force, that's when you see if a story's really worth it. Yeah. How does this stack up, though, as a second issue? Uh, it, it's not as good as the first issue, um, but it is still, like, good enough to, to... It still has my interest, and I'm still invested in it. Um, like, you know, here's the perfect line. I'm in. I'm, I'm into in. the story. I'm into the whole thing that's going on with it. Um, so, yeah, like, uh, I have to say... I'm going to keep reading it. It's not a perfect story. I give this like an eight, eight and a half, maybe mm. 8.7 out of 10. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it, I felt like it just, it's moving very slowly. The, it, the pacing is just very slow. It takes its time, um, which is, you know, purposeful because it is dealing with depression where things really seem like they're slowing down. But, uh, yeah, so overall 8.7 out, out of 10. And would you recommend, um, Picking up the first two issues to jump on, or just jumping on on the third, as long as you know the premise, or, or uh, what? I feel like you have to at least pick up issue number two if you're planning on reading this. Okay. Um, issue number one, it's it sets it up, but I feel like you can jump in on issue number two and still have a good idea. Issue number one helps it feel more real. Um, he, he the main character ex exposits you know just little tidbits and anecdotes about his daughter. Um, and then when you realize, oh, she died 10 years ago, it's like, yeah. heart kind of heartbreaking. This guy's, you know, still thinking about it all the time. Um, but issue number two, you can jump in as long as you understand, like, yeah. hey, like, this guy's daughter died and he's bummed out about it. Exactly. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah. Maze book, uh, <coughs> stacking up to be a pretty cool indie series. Yeah. Very personal. Yeah. Speaking of something that is completely not personal, has never been personal <laughs> since its inception, the Todd Fathers Spawn. Specifically, uh, Gunslinger Spawn, which I was super. Uh, I'm. I, we didn't have time before this video, but after this video, I'm gonna sink my teeth into this just because we have a weird relationship with Spawn. This is this is this was atrocious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, art by you know, written by Todd McFarlane, but art by Brett Booth. Um, and Brett Booth is a really good artist. I love him diving into the. That's um, what that's what sold me on the series. Like Brett yeah, Booth yeah, doing Spawn. Uh, honest, dude, I. I, I, I read the first, like, six pages, and I was like, I, I can't, I don't want to read this. Uh, so I just, I just flipped through, and I was like, oh, wow, this looks really cool. <laughs> <laughs> All of Spawn ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, oh, I was like, okay, I'm not going to read any of it, but I'm just going to look at the pictures, and it looks like, it's phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. 90s. Um, so I, I give, I guess, like, a 5 out of 10, because the art is great, and the story is not there. But, to, like, so. The funny thing is, is like Todd's like putting out all this supplemental material for Spawn, and it's both like super awesome and detrimental because, like for instance, King Spawn and the Spawn, um, Spawn's universe. Yeah. Oh, like um, we, um, dude, he. Okay, so you have to have read Spawn's universe in order to understand what's going on in this. Yeah, because he. I was stupid. That's, <laughs> he did like he has all these these stories going on, but you have to read all of them, and like if you like, I'm like, except for King Spawn, you can kind of jump into that. Yeah. But that's like the main title, like. But yeah, so like he has spinoffs in King Spawn. The, the back when Gunslinger is introduced in the backup, that's like the first chapter of Gunslinger's story. This it's all of a sudden. Yeah, this throws you in, and he's like, "Where am I?" He's like, "I'm all of a sudden. I'm in the. I'm in the like the present day. I was in 1865 <laughs> last time I checked, and now I'm in. <laughs> now I'm not there anymore. And I was, I was like, "What the? F I was like, why didn't this show is us number show one? Us. Yeah, I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like, okay, why?" Just show us him. You have the art and dialogue for the five-page yeah. backup. Just throw it in the Just beginning throw of this. It in the beginning of the, I don't know. It was, uh, and there's a backup in this. <laughs> uh, another spin. Spawn weapons. I don't know. Oh my! 
You see, like, that's what I want, like... There's two back up there. I'm less interested in this, but just, like, the spawn model at this point. They're basically, like, let's just kind of, like, prey on spawn nostalgia. They're, like, spawn universe where you get to relive all your favorite spawn moments. And it's, like, yeah. King Spawn where it's, like, what if we had a competent writer on spawn and, like, it's kind of cool. Yeah, I actually didn't pick up King Spawn number three because there's only so much spawn I could deal with in yeah. one given week. Um, and I had the realization that um, spawn number two... His whole thing is, oh, he's for, like, like you know, the bad guy makes Spawn kill a child, basically. I'm like, Frank Miller did that with Punisher back in, like, yeah. 1982. So, uh, which I, I had just read that, too, and I was like, oh, like, that's a lot better. That's a, just, like, it's more it's, well. Yeah, yeah. It, it just hit it a little better, and I don't know, after, after that, I was like, okay, maybe King Spawn is not really... I don't know. I'm not in love with it, and it's like $5 an issue. Yeah. So. But we simultaneously, um, these spawn things that come out, uh, at least in our experience, I don't know the general thing, but I can, I can, like, I, that seeing them be released, I almost feel nostalgia, even though, like, I was born in 2000. I, yeah, I like, I don't, there's, spawn is something, it's like, seeing spawn still going on, still going strong, it, issue number 300 sold, like, yeah, King Spawn number one sold hundreds of thousands of copies. Yeah, it's like insane. Because and like we, I have no nostalgia for Spawn. I didn't watch the animated series. I watched the movie, but like I don't feel nostalgia. The movie about is so it. bad. It is so I, bad. I don't have any nostalgia for Spawn. I think I had a Spawn toy because yeah, who, who didn't? Who did have it? A Spawn toy. The Todd Father. Mc, Mc, <laughs> anyway, um, five out of ten for Gunslingers. But I just want to say, like, I understand, like. It's crazy because, like, you see this, you're like, Spawn, and, like, I want to pick it up. And then you pick it up, and you're like, wait, this shit's bad. And then you see another one, you're like, oh, but it could be good, and it could be cool. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, this is bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, like, it, it's like, and I'm thinking, like, I'm, I'm probably not going to pick up the second one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're, um, they're I'd love to see the sales between the I, I, I got one. this because you wanted to read it. I do, yeah, I do want to read it. I'm going to read it after. You could have that. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't <laughs> get, want to. And out of my house. <laughs> All right, speaking to, uh, sp you know, something that, uh... <laughs> <laughs> speaking of uh, comic books, here's <laughs> another one. I was going to say, a series that could go either way, and I'm interested to hear because I also um, got to the comic book store too late to pick up my copy and I didn't bother subscribing. Uh, let's talk about The Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah, um, so... Tell me about it. Zeb Wells and Patrick Gleason are, are, are you know, working on this one, and it, I was expecting this to be written by someone else, and I saw Wells' name on it. I was like, he wrote the last one. I thought they were switching it up. Yeah. I don't care, because I like his story. Yeah, and it seems to be Ark. I think it's yeah. going to be... Because if you look at the covers and stuff, like, the so, next one's The Beyond, so... This also came out um, on the 13th last week, mm -hmm. um, but this is, this is really good. I mean, obviously, Spider-Man's in the hospital. Um, he's dealing... In the previous issue, we saw him and Ben Riley kind of get into a huge fight with with the, the VFOs or whatever. Um, and this is moving it in, you know, it's 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 continuing that momentum. And I'm at, I actually really enjoyed this issue. Wow. Um, it's you know it gave a lot more life. Uh, it fleshed out Ben and Peter's relationship a little bit more. Showed they're they're basically the same person. Like they're literally this. Like I, I'm pretty sure Ben's dating a clone of him. He is, yeah. And Ben, yeah. like, but the only real like discernible difference is Ben's kind of a little bit more of a dick. Like he's like a a little bit, but like a little but bit more. You see how he can't be a full dick. Like even like Peter Parker has that like dark side to him. Like if you read, which I am suffering through now, the first uh, couple like couple dozen issues of The Amazing Spider-Man by Steve... Way uh, back in the 60s. Stanley and Steve Dick Ditko. In the first... In, in Amazing Spider-Man Fantasy number 15, Peter is like, is, is like, wow, with these new powers, I can I can do great things. He's like, you know what? I'll always help out my aunt and uncle. They've always been here for me, but the rest of the world can go yeah. ha hang for all I yeah. care. And then, you know, he learns, he, okay, he has great to help power. the world with these powers. Is what That's what Ben and May want him to do. He's got the chip on his shoulder. Yeah, uh, and Ben Riley has that kind of same thing. Now, this makes him a lot more likable. Um, it, uh, it, ends, it ends really, really cool. Um, however, you see Ben and Peter, their paths are really separating here in this book. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens next. <coughs> um... I the next issue is written by Kelly Thompson and Sarah Pich uh, with Sarah Pacelli on That'd be cool. Um, I dig Kelly Thompson. She's not my favorite writer, but she's a name that I think I think w with time she can get better. She she's been working on the Silver Coin. Um, her issue was actually my least favorite in that series. Um, no, my second least favorite second in that series. Yeah. Um, but I'm really except for from my perspective. I'm happy that. 
you know, for the end of Spencer's run, we all we saw was like eight artists, and it was so inconsistent. I like that we're seeing Gleason, Pacelli, like some real yeah. good names. Yeah. And uh, last week, I kind of harped on uh, Patrick Gleason for not um, really. I feel I felt like not really putting it all out there. Uh, but this, it, it, it's not the same, okay? He used to have these incredibly detailed pages back in uh, when he was doing Green Lantern or Batman and Robin. Robin yeah. it, but it, this has more life to it, and this is a smaller issue, so he's able to actually... I feel like he wasn't as pressured. Uh, but when you give Boo some time to breathe, he actually... And I will mention, like, uh, it... The colorist is not doing him a lot of favors. It's it's relatively flat. Yeah, where... Men is um, who also worked on Daredevil, which is weird somewhere. So it's, it's... there, right there. Oh yes, um... which and the colors are obviously so dynamic in that, but they seem a bit flat in this. As you can see, it's white background. Yeah, it's... it's it's the backgrounds for me. It's it's a lot of it's that you you do have these these, these shots of, of um, Ben swinging through the city. Um, and oh yeah, and those little, are it's and... a little bit more. Even that, it's colored Details, beautifully. It's, col it's colored well because, like Batman and Robin, for instance, yeah. which are, I think is where Gleason's at his yeah, best. The shadows and everything here, it's great. But I, I like when Patrick Gleason doesn't give give a full page, full detail. It shows. Yeah, and the color. What are you supposed to do? Right. No, exactly. And like with Batman and Robin, obviously it's conducive to a black background, so it really helps Gleason's art a yeah. lot. But on a white background, it feels o flat. Overall, I'd give this like an eight and a half out of really? ten. Um, this I'm really digging this Spider-Man series. Um, it's it's got heart to it. It's taking Spider-Man in, in a cool, slightly new direction. I'm not sure how I feel about the whole Ben Riley thing, it, but it is doing a lot with Peter Parker as well, um, showing. You know, maybe there is that darkness still within Peter, and we're getting there. And um, it'll be interesting to see how well it works on that. Based on what he's done so far, um, it's definitely going to be interesting. I'm a sucker for the dark reflection of a hero, uh, exactly. illuminating his uh, his actual darkness. But um, yeah, uh, let's move it. Oh, I'm really interested to see your thoughts on this one. Yeah. Um. So this is the last issue of an arc, really, by Christopher Canwell and Cafu. Um. This basically is... It's Iron Man, man it's, it's, it's Yeah, did I say Iron Man? No, yeah. <laughs> um, it's Iron Man. Um, and basically, Iron Man and his um, team of heroes, like Hellcat, uh, Scarlet... Ben Riley's actually in this book, too. Um, That's Scarlet gonna Spider. Because, um, you know, the events of this have been going on before the yeah, events the of the Amazing Spider-Man. Spider -Man. And, um, but, yeah, he's in his, he's in his, 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 old, his old, you know... Scarlet Spider costume. Oh, that costume there. is just I so love that sick. costume. It's one of my favorite. Um, I played the entirety of my first PS4. Yeah, I, that's a great one. Um, but yeah, this wasn't as good as the last one. Mm. Um, the last it, one was a real high for you. The last one was wicked good. Yeah. This this got a little messy. There was a lot going on. But it like story-wise, it was very solid. It was just, um, you know, t like Tony... Um, He's basically he's really whacked out on on morphine at this point, <laughs> and like it, it's like and he's acting really odd. Which I mean, like obviously he's he's whacked out on morphine, so he's gonna be acting odd. But it, yeah. it was just I was like, why is he reacting like this? But you know, the other character saying Tony, like, what the fuck is wrong? With yeah, you? like are you are you all right? Like like like, like what's going on? He, he's like later, you know, there's a guy. <laughs> we gotta beat the guy first. Get me some medicine. Spider-Man? <laughs> yeah, Get me more pictures of Spider-Man. Get me more morphine, Spider-Man. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, um... And it's Ben, so Cat, he does Catholic's it. art is really, really cool. Oh, wow, yeah. Um, and it looks like in the next issue, um, they've been teasing this promotional material. The next issue is going to be the like really the start oh. of a new arc. Um, wow. Also, yeah, we're, benefit of the series, the Alex Ross covers yeah, are just yeah, immaculate. Oh, yeah, the, the next cover is, is, is oh, going on the wall. Yeah, no, it's certainly... We're, we're taking something down. Maybe we'll take down that. Yeah, I was saying <laughs> it. <laughs> Does that deserve it? Yeah. But the next one is just so... Like, yeah, I so... Look, oh, I'm, I didn't know I was holding up the flash, but... Yeah, yeah that's just like... Oh, like in the arc cool. reactor... So great. So, yeah, um, if you guys want to jump on issue 14, highly recommend jumping on issue 14. And then, uh, like Chad's doing, uh, because mentioned uh, he missed the first about seven issues of Iron Man, it's a perfect time because you know Marvel, you're going to get the first seven issues in a small trade and the second six or, you know, yeah. two both sets of six or seven issues in trades, and you can just jump on, see what you missed. You know, I'm sure there'll be something for new readers because it's the start of a new arc. Um, and... 
you know, Christopher Cantwell, he has hits, he has misses, um, but overall he's a great writer, and I might even jump on Iron Man because Chad has been singing the praises of this book that I've heard nothing about. Like, I, you're yeah, the only I'm, person that I'm talks about it. I'm not hearing a lot about this, but this is like, I've heard people complain, uh, like, about um, some, like, like, the only time I've heard people talk about this, I've heard one, one person talk about it and complain about how this is, like, pushing politics in the books. I'm like, I did not see any of that. That was one moment in like the in, that happened within the first six issues, and I, I haven't really seen any of that in the in here. This is just all action, um, you know, personal s- strife, deals with loss, deals with addiction, deals with trying to maintain a relationship while at the same time um, the strains of 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 just what superpowers and, and stuff being like that Tony does, Stark does like... to a relationship. Um, and that's when Cantwell's at his best. Yeah. His Doctor Doom series is all about basically the same themes, and it's just mint. Um, but when when he does get really political, yeah, it does get but forced. But it's, I have to say, the, the way the characters are bouncing off each other in this is so good. Yeah. It, there's not a single piece that doesn't make sense. It's all there. It all adds up. It is so tight. This issue is so tight. Um, but like I said, just a couple of... Uh, I have a couple of problems with, with a couple of small details, um, but overall, I have to say I'm thoroughly enjoying this book. So what are you giving it out of 10? I give it a 8.7 out of 10. Yeah, so a good score, um, and are you excited for the next arc? Like I am. Um, he, you know, Kent was like, pushing Iron Man in a direction like... Oh, um, so that's amazing. <laughs> basically, Iron Man's about to become a lot more powerful, so it'll be cool... Yeah, it'll be cool what to see happens. How, and how that, you know, obviously you say, like, personal turmoil, yeah. how Tony Stark can deal with that. Yeah. That'll, and can't, that's, and I love to hear that because I know that's going to be a banger because Christopher Cantwell's going to deal with, like, how Tony Stark can handle all this new power. Yeah. So, it'll, I'm sure that'll yeah. be great. Um, yeah, the, there were a couple of snafus in this. Um, like, one character is, like, mortally wounded and his boss is like shake it off and he, and he does I'm like alright like, okay. why did you say I'm mortally wounded it is merely a flesh wound um, and then some other characters I felt like were just kind of used um, for plot as plot devices mm, more not, than not yeah. as characters um, but overall that this arc has been really cool really wild with him getting trapped on a planet for like three issues yeah. um, fighting Stiltman in space and then, and then, <laughs> and then just keep jumping back into it uh, having a whole Hellcat issue without Iron Man in it at all. Those are some of the best. Um, it was just... The Secret Life of Falling Yeah, Nelson. Cantwell is doing a really great job. So uh, definitely jump on issue 14. Yeah, I, I think I'll be doing that as well. Because, um, I mean, you only have praise for that series. So it looks great. Now we're moving on to DC. Um, all, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll chad from here on out. But allow me to take the reins on one of my favorite new series coming out of Infinite Frontier. Number one, Another one like Iron Man that... Again, maybe started off a bit rocky. I'm not really sure how Iron Man started, but has found its own and just is a phenomenal series that no one is talking about. And it's The Flash. Um, You know, The Flash, in terms of characters, he's been... he. it's, it's, It's a weird duality where he's simultaneously been treated the best of any DC character in popular media because the show was so popular and we've been getting a lot of Flash. So that's great for Flash fans, but Flash, since probably like the Jeff Johns era, has not really been phenomenal. I mean, yeah, Francis Manipul, Brian Bussolato had some good stuff coming out. They had two good arcs, um, and then afterwards, Robert Venditti and um, Brett Brett, Brett, Brett Booth did a few of it, rotating artists. It was decent, but I don't know, it never really found traction. And then, obviously, Wally was gone, so, you know, all that was erased. And then we had Williamson and Rebirth over 100 issues, and, you know, our feelings on that. So, and, like, there was basically the Flash has been simultaneously treated the best and worst of any character in the DC yeah, universe. I would say he's solidly mediocre. He hasn't really gotten any real big highlights. And yeah, I'd say, like, b- behind the scenes as well, like, yeah, both good and bad yeah. in, in that regard. But um, one series that I was really skeptical coming into, or coming into out of, coming out of Infinite Frontier was The Flash. It was um, Jeremy Adams, and I looked forward, basically a new uh, artist on every single issue, and... As a comic book fan, I know Chad will agree. Not a fan of that. I like a consistent tone. Um, what's great is the artists try to kind of mirror each other and have consistent tones. 
Um, that's still probably my biggest problem with the series as a whole is the rotating artists, but it's been phenomenal ever since the end of that first arc. I think Adams was way too ambitious with that first arc. It was a time traveling epic uh, throughout all of Flash history, which didn't really work. Um, but these last couple issues with Heatwave and now uh, spending time with his daughter and now this new um, issue with uh, a new villain called Streakmaster or something. Um, is he Starbreaker. Naked? Is he naked? <laughs> Streakmaster. <laughs> and he's just running around. And I thought I was the flag. <laughs> <laughs> This new villain called, <laughs> called Starbreaker. Um, but <clears throat> it's a really cool premise. He's Adam seems to have learned from his mistake. And if there's an arc, it's a two-issue arc. And it really works really well for The Flash. It's This book should essentially be called The Day in the Life of The Flash. It's Wally, by the way, if this is your first Wednesday Warriors or you're not on The Flash. Wally is The Flash. And um, Adam has really found a great voice for Wally. Um, he, makes a jo he makes a joke of like, Basically, the premise is, is there's this, like, s this spear that, if you've seen Kingsman, kind of makes everyone violent and rude and depressed. And, like, so everyone's fighting. Linda's like, I hate that you don't close the cabinet doors and storms out. And, like, um, there's great stuff. And there's a meta joke of, like, somebody yelling, I like the old costume to Wally, um, referring to, like, his rebirth stuff. Um, and it's just really, it's, it's honestly a really good book. It's filled with humor. It's filled with heartfelt moments and it just really understands Wally. Um, and, and I, I love it. There's a, also a kind of a meta joke where Wally comes up against his entire rogues gallery, um, and beats them all within like three seconds. And it's just kind of funny because like, everyone's like, oh, why do, oh, why does the Flash only fight speedsters? And yeah, it's like, well, yeah. cause when he doesn't, this happens and yeah. it's like five panels and he's done. Um, so yeah, and, and, and it's a great issue. I love this series. Like it's just, it's just phenomenal. Yeah, Ryan said, he was like, dude, you have to jump on this. And I was like, uh, you know what? I love the flash. I always yeah. have, but the thing, like, it's just like, like Ryan said, it's been mediocre. Flash has had some great stuff. Morrison and Wade did a oh, phenomenal, yes. and Jeff Johns after that did a phenomenal job with the flash. But in the past 10 years, it's been um, occasionally we'll get like a glimpse of something great, but solidly yeah, mediocre. Exactly. And although by no means am I saying this is like going to, if you pick up this in Nightwing, it's going to stack up to each other. It's not revolutionary for the character. If I were to describe it, it's a fun return to the status quo. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's all you need for a character. After being reverse, re erased from continuity, it's just nice to see Wally hanging out with his family dealing with his rogues, and just, like, it's, like, again, the day in the life of the Flash, and, like, it's yeah. written really well, and I love it. So, I'm gonna give this, um, I'm gonna give this a 9 out of 10. I really enjoyed it. Um, again, it's not the greatest thing ever, but it's just a fun series that I enjoy reading every time it comes out. Um, I just want to touch on this one briefly. This is one from last week as well. Superman and the Authority number four. I haven't read it, candidly. I just wanted to speak for brief moments for how I want this to end. So, Superman Suicide Squad has been formed and is working together by the end of issue three, essentially. We, we had three issues of setup, and now this is the conclusion. <laughs> um, <laughs> what the kind of pacing is that? It's Grant Morrison. He's so whack. The first issue... The first two issues yeah, were I read the first, uh, the first issue was whack. It was, it was so... Whack. And it's been yeah. nothing short of whack to the whole thing. Um, but what I'm hoping for, honestly, uh, and if you've read it, please let me know... Um, because uh, I'll have read it by the time uh, we look at the comments. I'm hoping, and what I always hope for when I pick up a Grant Morrison Superman book, is for Grant Morrison's Superman to be there. Um, if you know about Grant Morrison, you'll know what I mean when I say that. Like, Grant Morrison writes the best Superman, and it's, mm -hmm. it's not even close. Uh, and I just want to see, you know, it's a wonderful pairing of these morally gray, morally questionable, kind of like psychopaths, uh, like Manchester Black, like Midnighter, um, all kind of these, again, morally gray, under the command of this kind of jaded Kingdoms Come Superman, but who's still unwilling to compromise on his morals. So that, the dynamic is really interesting. I just hope he doesn't, like, look, I love Grant Morrison's whackness. I just hope he ma doesn't make it so whack that it, it's unreadable. It's, exactly. It's accessible. Like, it needs to resonate. Like, the, the theme of, like, 
um, Superman sees the good in these people, so we can see the good in um, everyone as well, has kind of been the theme of the series. Um, and I'm just hoping some whack shit, like, doesn't distract from that theme and it really comes home. So, yeah. I mean, I'm actually really excited to finish that. I've been excited for this series for quite a while. Yeah, so we'll, we'll get into that probably in the next uh, Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. definitely. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll mention it. Um, up next, we have Catwoman number 36 by Rom V with art by... Um, Did, not um, Eber, not Ferrer or... Um, uh, Nina Vacueva and Laura Braga. Um, what's the... Who's the uh, Fernando Blanco is the normal Yeah, artist. Th- this... The art, this art is not fantastic. There's a couple of, of uh, pages yeah. and stuff that I'm like, okay, I'm like, uh, why did you, why did you draw it like that? But overall, the art is is you know more than halfway decent. I'd say I'm enjoying it, but the story is really good. This Catwoman story is actually one of the the only few Fear State things I feel like it did. The Fear State didn't ruin the flow of what was going on. Mm-hmm. It makes sense for Catwoman to be experiencing these things. They really made Alley Town the center of like. The magistrate's like focus because it's like Catwoman is trying to like basically almost have her own little community going on. Wow, that's um, cool. But um, it, I like the main villain Simon Saint is uh, he he gets mentioned a couple times in here, but he hasn't been shown. He was shown once in the last, just yeah. like hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Um, so it is, it is getting to the point where where Fear State is stretching it's like, um, the story on. away from what was going on. But uh, Rom V is still able to make solid progress with what's going on. I think we have one more issue of Fear State um, for all the... I yeah. Think that one's got one more. Um, that one's got one more. This, I mean, this, it, 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 it you know, starts out, you know, some big superhero, supervillain team-ups. And then it gets into um, a heist at the end of this book, which is really cool. Um, and they're not fully done with the heist. And there's a cool twist at the end. Great, great comic really? book. Great Catwoman comic book. Rom V just knows what he's doing with, with this character. He he knows um, exactly how to write a Catwoman book. Um, he, it's, it's, it is really cool. All the pe- Every little piece that he's been placing throughout his series is, is coming through. Um, in a couple issues ago, Catwoman, Catwoman was saved by like Clayface and Killer Croc. And then in the previous issue, we saw them deciding to fight back against the Magistrate. And here we have them... Um, Working with Catwoman again, uh, Harley Quinn makes an appearance. Right. If you can see it based on the cover, not a spoiler, it's on the cover. I'm, in, I'm interested because um, what was it that we were reading that it was written by a good writer? And we were like, wow, I really enjoyed Harley Quinn in this. Uh, it was It's on a Wednesday Warriors. I forget what it was, but we both pick up, p- picked up a book and we were like, Harley Quinn was our favorite thing about this comic, which is weird because we don't like Harley Quinn. Do you remember that? I do remember that. But I don't remember what it was specifically. Um... And again, big fans of the animated series version of Harley Quinn, but the current kind of Deadpool-y Harley Quinn, not a huge fan of. Uh, I think I know. Chad yeah, is but a, um, how did, I was gonna say, how this, does Rom V right? This was very good. Th- this reminds me of like the Arkham City Harley Quinn. Oh, um, interesting. You know, I'm also a big fan of that. She calls Mister um, basically everybody Mister Fa- Mister Clayface. Clayface mm-hmm. is Mister Face. Um, Mr. Cro- Mr. Croc for Killer Croc. Mr. Krabs. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Biff. Um, I thought it was funny. She calls she calls her Bat Plan B. Um, and I I have a feeling Ron B was like, like making an inside joke about like the preventative birth control. I'm not sure, but like I couldn't <laughs> shake that. I was just like uh, never leave home without Plan B. I'm uh, like, uh, uh, what's going on? Um, but yeah, this is like a nine, a nine point like two out of out of wow. ten. like a very solid issue. But Fear State is you know detracting from getting full potential. But um, Ron V's been been setting the uh, the pieces in place. Like White Witch here, um, we see her in like issue twenty nine, and now she's back again, and now she's with the magistrate. It all makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, he's not letting Fear State destroy his, his story he's letting it accentuate his story which uh, I'm enjoying no yeah that's really. yeah. as, as uh, I guess uh, Chad Chad's reading both I'm only reading one Fear State time but for for him um, you know it's interesting to see one story which we will get to in Nightwing basically take Nightwing completely do a 180 out of his plot and throw him in this Fear State stuff um, that has no relation to what's going on in the actual yeah. book um and have that kind of perspective 
and also kind of this one where it ties in and it's really well, um, not that Nightwing isn't well executed, but, you know, ties into the actual main plot. Of, yeah. Of the, it's, it's an interesting kind of duality. Um, but to keep on Catwoman. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was, I was... So, this was like an impulse buy because, uh, I don't know, because, like, Ron V, killer, killer Catwoman writer, right? Mm. And I picked up um, this, which is Catwoman Lonely City by uh, Cliff uh, Chiang or Chiang. Um... It's written, drawn, colored, and lettered by uh, Chiang. So I just want to say I love the art. Yeah, um, that's part. Honestly, the reason I picked up this book, I wasn't sure about it, but I picked it up and I saw like police with like bat cows on, and I was like, like "Sign okay. me Let's up!" Let's go. Um, it takes place ten years in, in um, ten years after the death of Batman. Um, so, so like, she's old, like twenty years in the future. She's fifty five. Okay. Um, oh and wow! It, it's it's a lot like the Dark Knight Returns because he was fifty five when uh, he came back. So it's it, it's it's got it takes some flavor from the Dark Knight Returns. <coughs> I almost just swallowed my gum there <laughs> in, in my lungs. Um, Where are they? But um, it it's my, my biggest problem here is that it is not a Gotham City that's incredibly full. Okay. Um, so, whereas with the Dark Knight Returns, you have the Mutants gang, it's still Gotham City, it's still drab and dark, even though the villains aren't there, it's still Gotham. Yeah. This, it doesn't really feel like Gotham. Also, the coloring, it, it, it's like a Darwin Cook cartoony thing, whereas, like, I, yeah, it's super, yeah, it should be it super is, somber. Yeah, I was expecting a noir kind of feel, and it is just a little bit, uh... Too pop art. Too pop art, yeah. exactly. Um... You get some great... Harvey Dent is is um, a, a big character in this. He, he, the Penguin pops up. Killer Croc pops up. Interesting. Um, you get a reference to Mr. Freeze. Back, um, Barbara Gordon pops up. But just slightly. And it's not... I feel like they're not necessarily, like, perfect, perfectly characterized. I don't, I don't think um, Chiang really fully grasped all the characters. Even Catwoman herself, like, basically... She gets out of prison, and immediately she goes back to her old ways. Ugh. And, um... Come on. Does very explain why. Like, like at the end of the book, you have a reason for her doing this, but it's like, okay, yeah, but she just kind of jumped back in immediately without really... Yeah. Even, even, like, even, you know, want, like, like, even thinking about that reason, she's like, I gotta be Catwoman, I gotta get my name back. So, like, the moral complexity is, is missing. Yeah, which is um... The, the soul of a Catwoman story. Exactly. There are some, some cool bits, um, I'm, I'm honestly not sure if I'm gonna keep up with it. Um, it is, it's, it's, it's one of these huge black label books, so it, it is, it is, it's, it's uh, so annoying to store as well. Yeah, stupid annoying the store because I could put it on my bookshelf. Yeah, but, um... Well, like, the problem is it's, like, the, it's the width. Like, yeah, it's like a square. It's, yeah, it's, very, it's like I can't high. I can't put it with my other comics, but like I can't put it in my bookshelf. Like for instance, not the like Batman the Imposter or like uh, the Urban Legend stuff. I can just stick that in a bookshelf because yeah. it's thick. But you know, or or store with my other comics. It gives me options, but those are just so annoying to store. Like we're we're still waiting on um, issue two. Brian Azzarello's issue two of uh, Azzarello's get Joker. Get super Suicide Squad. Like, get Joker. Joker. Horrible name. Um, We're gonna buy it though, just because of Alex Molina's art. Yeah, but um, yeah. So I don't really. I think this was like a seven point five out of ten. It felt kind of empty. It had a lot of really good parts. It has a lot of really good ideas going on, but it's just um, you can't help comparing it to better stories, better stories like the Dark Knight yeah. Returns or, or even, even the current, ongoing yeah. Catwoman story. So seven point five out of ten. Uh, so, last one before uh, a plethora of books that we share. I, I'm, I'm interested to see why you picked this up. I picked this up um, because I looked in the in the opening here and I saw Dan Waters' name on um, oh, an Asriel story. story. That's interesting. Um, and so, like, I, was, I, I, I didn't really... And also, like, they have the order of the, sto the stories here. It's different from how it is. So I was trying to just find the Asriel story, and I was like, where is it? Where is it? And the previous story, I couldn't even tell it ended. The art looks kind of similar. It just says end in the, in the oh bottom corner. God. And uh, I was I was like, where's the Asriel story? And I would flip through, and I'd be in the middle of it. I'm like, hey, I'd be at the end of it. I'm like, no, it's the, where, where is it? <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I, I, I tried to read a lot of these stories, but I couldn't because they, a lot of them just weren't good. 
Um, I tried to read the first one. Um, it's it's a Batwoman story with um, Sandra Kane with Sandra Kane written by Alyssa Wong. Um, oh God! And it's it's uh, it was like basically I I tried to give it a, a fair shot. It has a really cool premise. Someone's kind of trying to like frame Cassandra Kane's Batgirl, um, but um, and then it switches to Kate Kane and her sister. Um, and they're just bitching at each other <laughs> for, like, three pages. And then Kate's ex-girlfriend shows up, but then they're all bitching yeah, at each other. Oh, God. And, I mean, and then... It just goes to show you how much Chip was carrying this $9 yeah, buck. Oh, like, my gosh. As, yeah. $8. I don't remember. Oh, yeah, $8. I don't even remind me how much I... I got the Azure cover. It's cool. It I, I think cool. that's worth um, it. I really but like that. Then so that and then I I didn't even bother with the, with the professor professor pig story um, no. by Christian Ward, um, but when it came to the Dan Waters and um, Nicola Chismegia, yeah, um, the Dark Knight of the Soul Azure and Dark Knight of the Soul Part One, I was I was it it wasn't great because it was only like ten pages long if that, <laughs> very short. Um, but very sweet. It had a lot of flavor to it. Um, I didn't like Azriel out of costume. Um, uh, I hate that. Him as a person was fine, but he just made some. He said some things that were just kind of like, oh. like lame. Because um, Azriel's such he, a cool character. He, he, he's, he's like, I don't use a battle axe. I use a flaming sword. I'm like, dude, yeah, shut up, oh, man. <laughs> Cringe. Oh no. Cringe. Oh no. Cringe. Um, but it actually, like, Azriel, if you don't know, he he, he was a brainwashed by a the religious order. The Order of Saint Dumont. Uh, it's like a it's like a Christian Templar kind of yeah. thing. Assassin's um, Creed style. Yeah, stuff. he was brainwashed by them to be like a, a killer. He fought back to programming, and this actually has a really interesting take on religion. It, it's like he says here. Um, uh, but now I, I can remind myself how the Order of St. Dumas twisted Christ's teachings. I'm following the true way, the truth, because he actually read the Bible, and it was actually oh, really, really cool. cool. Nuance, no, yeah, that like, was awesome. Yeah, usually in media, you just get people saying, like... Like shitting on Christianity. Shitting, yeah. shitting on any any organized religion, um, really. But this, it was actually... A, like, That's I, really cool. I really enjoyed it. Um, I like the art as well. This, wait, this story takes place before the events of Arkham City Number 1. Uh, Arkham, like, Ar Arkham City number one. Like, which Arkham City? I don't know. It would be night, Ar like, because there's an ongoing Arkham City, or do they mean the tie-in comic, or do they mean the comic retelling the story of the game, or what do they mean? Because there's all those, all those exist. If you know, please let us know. Yeah, but this, Michael Lane was Asriel in the Arkham City game. Oh, yeah, he was uh, African-American. Yeah. yeah, not... Jean Paul, uh, yeah, Jean Paul Valley. Yeah, I don't know. It does. I just didn't even know that until I just now. Um, it, it doesn't affect it. Though, yeah, but so. um, the first story is, is like a fear state tie-in with uh, Cassandra Kane. Um, Who can't sell their own book? And, Let's throw and, it in our mentions. <laughs> and then I tried. And I tried to read this outsider story, and I wasn't having it. Oh, and, and then I flipped, I flipped to the end, and I saw Tim Drake calling himself Red Robin, which is like you know awesome for me being a Tim Drake Red Robin fan. Uh, but then I tried to go back and read it. I was like, "Oh, this is just oh, this story. is story. It's horrible." Um, but like, here's the thing: I was, red, orange, and yellow, blue, indigo, <laughs> uh, violet, Robin. I was <laughs> I was willing to pay uh, eight dollars when Cliff uh, when Cliff when, <laughs> when Chip Zdarsky was telling a twenty page story on okay? Red Hood, a character you actually semi care about. Yeah, um, I. Don't think I'm willing to pay, and like mostly like two of these, like the outsider story is gonna continue in the next one. The Batwoman story is gonna continue in the next oh, one. Gosh. So the next the next one's gonna have one other little um, anthology story, and then at ten the Tim Drake story becomes the um, by Megan Fitzmartin. Yeah, at ten it becomes the main one. So. I don't even know if I can. I I don't know. Like I want to read the the the. the I want to keep reading the Azure story. It, 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 my biggest problem was that it was too short. It means I wanted more. Yeah, just imagine a mini series. That'd but be awesome. I, I can't pay. I listen. I will pay five dollars to read a ten-page backup um, of, Justice, of Justice League Dark. Yeah. Okay. I will not pay eight dollars to read a, like a like a like a ten, like eight, less ten than ten pages, pages yeah. backup of uh, Astro. I just you can't, can't swing it. it so. And that's uh, it for Urban Legends. Three until out of ten. <laughs> probably, probably till the Tim Drake one when we when we Chad and I agreed to split it to see what happens, yeah. see how they're gonna assassinate him next. 
All right. Um, let's talk about Batman the Imposter is Sus. This is by Matt Tomlin, who's he works in Hollywood. Really? I didn't um, know anything about him. I wondered if it, he did. It says uh, he's a director and screenwriter. He's worked on Project Power and Little Fish. Uh, never heard of him. Yeah. Uh, but Andrea Sorrentino does the art. We I know. And Sorrentino's yes. d- done great work with uh, Green Arrow. Great work with um, some other stuff. Some other stuff. Uh, Joker, first Joker, of all... Smile, Gideon Falls. Oh, Joker, Kill, Smile is so good. But, um... I would like to just point it out. There's a reason this... Look at him. And look at that. It's... Cl- and look at that. Um, so, uh, to tie into the media, any big movie that's coming out, for instance, at Marvel, when Captain America Civil War was coming out in theaters, they released um, Civil War Two by Brian Michael Bendis. Civil War II had to do with Captain Marvel fighting against Iron Man. It had nothing to do with the movie whatsoever. Um, they just wanted to have a book called Civil War um, on the shelf. This is kind of the same thing for the Batman. It's, as you saw from the picture, like, Bruce Wayne is clearly trying to look like Robert Pattinson. The bat suit is similar. Um, it's kind of, it's set in year three, whereas um, yeah. we know the Batman is set in year two. Like, the world is very similar um, I, yeah. I, I, it's, I think it's deliberate, quite frankly. It is. It is. Um, because he does look like Robert Pattinson. I, I'm pretty sure I heard somewhere that this was vaguely inspired by the Batman movie. Yes, and so it doesn't tie into that. It's universe. probably going to have nothing to do. Yeah, with it. Um, <laughs> doesn't because even already beats beats from this and yeah. from what do we know about the Batman don't make sense at all. Um, but th- this was. I enjoyed it. I really liked it. I don't think it was, like, the Batman story for me. Um, I love Sorrentino's art, but some of the action sequences just weren't working. Um, and I have to kind of blame Tomlin for that, because I've seen Sorrentino do some really great art. Oh, yeah, that. Um, so... Yeah, I, I know what you mean. I, yeah, like, the whole scene when Batman stops the fight at the at the, the convenience store, it's... it's it's okay, like, a uh, little... I'm like, a big fan of the coloring, though. I, I, I love the coloring. I love what I'm being shown. I just... I feel like we're not focusing on the right things here, and that's... But some beautiful panel layouts. Um, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The paneling is, is fantastic. And um, I love how, uh, if... Yeah, hold that up for a little. If you can see there, uh, the knife, you see him stepping on his leg. It highlights Batman's brutality. Yeah. Um, which makes him really feel like a fallible character in this. Mm-hmm. I think... I think it's really well written, honestly. It, it is. I just feel like Tomlin needs to work on his comic book storytelling. I, I agree. But I think in terms of... You're right. As a comic book, it doesn't really work as well. It reads better as a TV show. I was imagining it like in my mind, mm-hmm. playing out like a TV show. Um, Which makes sense, considering Tomlin usually writes Exactly. Because like, Chad... If you don't know, Chad and I write comics in our free time. And uh, when we're writing, whenever, we, uh, whenever I have homework to write something by myself... Um, and Chad's editing it. He's like, this is great, but it, you're imagining it as a TV show. Yeah, like, this would yeah. work great as a TV show, but as a comic book, you need to kind yeah, of... Yeah, you gotta focus on what each, what you can do with each panel. At other times, it, it, it is fine. Like, um, here's a we one. see someone getting robbed. Uh, I, the, uh, I will spoil it. Rat catchers in this, and yeah, he, it's one of the best briefly, parts. Um, I really like that, where I get it as well. Um, Leslie Tompkins is, is kind of Bruce. It, it, it is um, the Batman's aide. Alfred's left. It seems she seems um, to be his uh, his 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 moral conscience, yeah, like um, the the yin to his yang. And we get in, uh, introduced to this character, Detective um, Wong. Yeah, Detective Wong, who I actually thought was one of the stronger parts. Of yeah, that. she was a very. She's just used to GCPD detective. Uh, investigating uh, the Batman and as you can tell, the other Batman. Basically. Yeah, so, so basically, someone there's an imposter running around as Batman. Do, 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 it's do, heavily do, implied do, do. that the elite of Gotham have had enough of Batman. I thought that, that was a business. really interesting. That perspective. was cool. Yeah, um, we're seeing things that just make a lot of sense for Batman, and in a really saturated Batman market, it where felt so fresh. It it really did, and I have to give it credit, even though it really feels like a year one rehash. Parts of it. A bit. Um, yeah, it was able to make it feel fresh, make it feel really grounded too. She's like investigating Batman. She's like, okay, like there's a bunch of zip uh, of, of zip lines all yeah. over the city. There's a bunch of motorcycles all over the city. Somebody has money to be doing this. We're not sure like who or what. Um, and it was really cool be- because basically um, Tomlin has a perspective of like 
well, like, the elites don't like Batman because, like, the, the damage that yeah. happens, like, affects the elites. And, like, it, it's really interesting how they how Wong is deducing to a ba uh, Batman's secret identity is really cool with the motorcycles mm -hmm. and things like that. I think it's, I think, I think our perspective on this is, uh, we really like it in the sense yeah. of it's, it feels super fresh. Um, obviously we're super excited for the Batman. So those parallels are cool, but characters are great. Um, what Tomlin's doing with Wong, the rat catcher of Batman, Leslie Tompkins is all great. Um, it's so fresh. The takes are so fresh. Seeing an outsider come in and take on Batman is really great. The writing's great. It's just he needs to understand how a comic book works. And I think that's like the small thing that is holding it back from being phenomenal. Um, yeah, I have to agree with that. Um, but I'm still going to keep reading it. Oh, yeah. um, I'm I'm really digging it so far. It feels like Bendis is Daredevil in a weird way. It kind of... It does. Um, I know what you mean by that. Yeah, it, like, it's... This, this specifically, mostly the art and, like, the words, it reminds me at the end of the first issue when Matt's uh, hunting down the guy who blew up the courthouse. Yeah. This, like, uh, I guess the green back, the green sky kind of really did it for me. But, like, you know what I mean? Like, there's some casual conversations. It's very, it's kind of Bendis-like. Um, and obviously Maliv, uh and Sorrentino kind of share a similar style. But, yeah, I mean, the, some of the panel layouts are phenomenal. And it's... I think it's worth the read, honestly. Uh, I, I, it's, it's going to be a recommend for me. I don't know about. I have them. to. I have to recommend this. Um, it, it, a lot of people were. I, I remember. I or uh, friends of the, friends of the channel, Comics Kings, on yes. their last week's uh, weekly wrap up, they mentioned that this was coming out, and um, Brandon was talking about uh, with Hillbilly Comics about whether they want to read this, and. Um, Brandon was like, oh, well, there's just so many Batman books right now. Um, but this is a really good one, and it's a fresh one. And if you want a cool, updated take on Batman in the modern age, a lot like Earth One. Um, it is very Earth But, like, a little bit more, almost more grounded than Earth One. Yeah, which is, um, it's, it's a bit more brutal. Whereas yeah. Earth One's more grounded. This yeah. is, like, a very brutal take on Batman. Very, very, it all makes sense. Like, it, it, it all... He really very, very does, well, yeah. like... The detective work, the the why people don't like Batman is like, it's really ever, all the characters do exactly what they should do, and the funny thing is like that should be a given, but in comics it's not nowadays. Yeah. So like it's it's really ref the fact that honestly my biggest praise for a Batman book in today's era is it's refreshing because Batman there's just it's so tired at some points. I feel like we're telling the same story over and over, but. This feels really fresh, and I really like it. Yeah, I'm not even sure if the main thing, the imposter, is the. Is I don't the really highlight. care about that. Yeah. Like I care about Wong. It's almost a MacGuffin. It just pushes the plot along. Exactly. Like um, I, but I'm more interested in Wong. In. Yeah. So yeah, um, Tomlin, you have my vote of approval, and I will keep reading your series. Absolutely. Uh, what are we gonna give it? I. Well, I I probably give it a nine out of ten. I give it a nine. It has some flaws based on just what the frames are showing, but the yeah. frame, what the frames do show is just gorgeous. Yeah. Um. Love love the way they present Batman. Love the inspiration that is drawn from Year One and from Earth One. Um. And I and the oh, maybe the Batman. We'll see. And the cliffhanger at the end really makes me excited for the next issue. I have to agree. All right. Now we're going to talk about a really contentious book at the. You want to save it or do you want to talk no, about it? No, no, we'll talk about we'll it. We'll go. All right, so um, a really contentious book. Uh, next issue is going to be a bit more contentious, but it's Superman, Son of Kal El by it, Tom Taylor, and with art by oh, a different Tim's. Uh, Tim's. It's usually yeah. somebody else. Uh, uh, Dan Danielle, um, what? Danielle, Danielle, what? Why did Tim's get a credit? Tim's did the cover. John Tim's did the cover. That's oh. So I've heard, yeah, John Tim's. I've heard his name before, but yeah. the art is by Danielle. John uh, Tim's is the regular artist of the series. Uh, uh, Danielle D. Nicolo. It's very much in the same vein, though, as, um, as, that's the different one. Yeah, but High Five does the colors. Um, so it feels very similar, but this not, is the... I'm not a fan of the art, gotta say. Really? Look at the, look at the tricep on the flash. It's very look similar that. to the main Anatomic, artist, though. Anatomically incorrect. He's huge. It's, that's not what people look like. <laughs> look at how skinny his wrist is. You see that? You see that? Come on! I didn't. I, didn't, I honestly didn't have a real problem with it. I had a problem with it because it, it, <laughs> it fit tonally with the other one, though. Even if you're not it a fan, it did fit tonally, but I just didn't. 
did the other artists. I, I I like that they used the right Wally West Flash too. Yes, that um, is great. That, that's huge. So you know the single bolt, you love to see it. But um, all right. What we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the issue real quick, our thoughts on the issue, and then we'll talk about what everybody wants us to talk about regarding this series. <laughs> I really, really liked it. Like really, yeah, really this liked was it. this was really solid. Um, it's like t- like I, I I don't think it was the best issue of the series. Uh, I felt like it was just a little bit slow because last issue it was really heating up. This issue is heating up again. Um, but I I feel like. I feel like th- this was like just a little dip in the pacing. I I agree, but I love seeing him talk with his uh, grandparents. I love seeing uh, like you know bringing someone home, and like he was kind of nervous about that, you know, because clearly you know you know what's going on in the series. We'll talk about it. Um, but and then I love I love John. John's this new age of heroes, like Wally West, uh, like something I praised for the Flash series. John doesn't solve things with his fists. Um, not that Clark does, but you know what I mean? Like, Wally beats the heroes because of with, because he empathizes with them. Like, in the sense of, yeah, the reason you can tell Wally's story about some guy named the Trickster, and, you know, it's not over within yeah, half yeah, yeah, a yeah. panel, is like, because Wally empathizes with them. And Dick, uh, Dick Grayson, for instance, does the same thing. So, like, John is very much that type of thing. Um... Weirdly enough, Wally does try to solve it with his fists in this one, which is kind of, I thought was a little weird, um, considering that's not Wally at all. You know, like, so basically there's this kind of scared, defenseless hero, um, and Wally's like running in for a super punch. Um, and then he's like, wait, I, wait, she's not a threat? What? And it's like, Wally, dude, like two issues ago in your own series, you just, Heatwave was burning down a hospital and you empathized with him and gave him a big hug in front in the public square, you know? Yeah, but um, she, they, did, they did just both the Kent's house. And, and, and punched Wonder no, no, yeah. Woman into orbit, which I, yeah. I can understand. But, you know, Wally, I, I still thought it was a little weird. They, but they, 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 like, even, even like, you know, whoever this new Wonder Woman, don't know her name. It's a, well, I think it's Apollo. Uh, it, Wonder Woman comes in and says, all right, we'll take care of you. Like, like John explains the situation and they're like, oh, all right, yeah, we'll look after you. Um, the Justice League pops up. Really good conversation between, between Wally and John. Uh, John, oh, and John that was there, great. Though. It reminded um, me of the one between uh, Nightwing and Super- Clark Kent Superman in uh, the Nightwing series. It's really cool to see like these two characters yeah, meet like, for the first time. Yeah, they, they this is actually their... Uh, yeah, they're actually... They introduce each other. We haven't met, but I'm Wally. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah and first time Wally meets John. And it's a great conversation, like... Um, like and it was and it per- makes perfect sense. Wally says to John, um, "Because I know." Uh, so why are you telling me your civilian name? I'm saying. And Wally goes, "Because I know what it's like to step into the boots of your hero. All those little doubts, all the ways uh, you worry about measuring up. Anytime you want to talk, I'm around." And I was just like, "That's yeah, so I, Wally." I'm, West. I'm hoping for a great re- relationship between John Kent and Wally. It would make sense it, that it, they it would, makes, yeah, because they are, you know, they're each the next get the successors to the main. Ex- Heroes. And we never really like Connor was never really that. Connor yeah. was Connor was about not being Superman. Yeah. Whereas John is about trying to be a better Superman. Yeah. Which is like it's kind of the Tim Drake to Dick Grayson. Like Dick Grayson isn't about like Dick Grayson is to be not Batman, whereas Tim yeah. Drake is to be a better and, Batman. And it, it, this, this book handles, you know, the way John goes about it, he's like, I'm going to to be uh protesting these things, I'll get arrested for what I believe in. He goes to confront um um, Bendix in Gamora, and um, he's like, "Why can't I attack a sovereign nation?" And Lois Lane's like, "You just like, can't. like you were technically an American citizen, and you will spark an international issue." Yeah, uh, which is why Superman, like, like in Earth One, uh, Michael Drusinski does Superman Earth One, and in that, Superman like topples like a dictatorship in Southeast Asia, <laughs> and immediately the world's like, "You can't, you can't do that." And Superman's like, "I just liberated like." 50 million people from, like, <laughs> enslavement, basically. And they're like, yeah, but... but the idea of a superpower being nobody can yeah. stop going around toppling governments is not a... Good, Welcome to Injustice. A good like, <laughs> exactly. It's a slippery slope kind of thing. Um, but and, John's and, still, like, this ideological... Like, idealism kind of... Yeah, he's... he's why a, don't he, I help everyone? And, and I was talking on the phone, like, with uh, Ryan about this. Well, okay, um, so let's, let's finish... Real quick... What do you give the issue out of 10? Because then I want to talk about the whole John Kent thing. Uh, 8.5. Art kill... Art, art detraction. I think I'd give it about an 8.9, 8. but yeah. Alright, so let's talk about 
you go ahead with you were on the phone because yeah, this ties Brian and I were on the phone because um, Tom Taylor and DC Comics announced that John Kent is going to be bisexual and he's going to be you know coming out or whatever in issue five uh, five and uh, with this guy Jay Nakamura I think now. People are calling it um, just a, a cash grab or just to draw attention to the book. Yes, it Obviously. is because they're using it as marketing material. Um, they want more people to read it, and they think that's a good way to get them to read it. Um, this has been selling really well otherwise. Yeah, they're even with re- that. They're going to reprint the first four issues already. Yeah, and that was before um, even we knew about this. But people, But this makes like perfect sense to do with a character like John. Let, let me just put this out there. Also, I know we're geniuses, but I don't know if it was on video or not. I, I, cause I'm I didn't not go 90% back. sure. I think yeah. it is on video. Back I, when yeah. we talked about Tim Drake. So if you guys don't know, Tim Drake also came out as bisexual. We were wholeheartedly against that decision um, just based on history, history, essentially, of Tim Drake. Tim Drake's history doesn't lend itself to him being bisexual, yeah. in our opinion. Yeah. But... Chad said, and I'll give Chad credit for this one, Chad said, someone like John Kent or Damian Wayne is a yeah. perfect character to make bisexual because they, or John Kent specifically, was a kid, now he's in college around our age, basically. Mm-hmm. He, that, that's the time, like, he would be figuring out his sexuality. And look what happened. And you know what? I, I said to Chad on the phone when he, he I was like, of course Tom Taylor did this, because Tom Taylor knows how to write a good comic book. Yeah. Like, Tim Drake's was done for shock value. This makes sense. If, like, if if someone's going to come out as bisexual, John Ken is the perfect one. He was a kid, so he didn't have whatever sexual feelings, romantic feelings, didn't experience love. Now he's in college when you're actually figuring out that stuff out in real life. And he was just thrown into the deep end. Mm-hmm. He's going to be experimenting with his political ideology. He's going to be experimenting with his sexuality. He has no long-standing relationship, like, I don't know, the last 20 years with one girl named Stephanie Brown or Cassandra Sandsmark or whoever, you know, he, he doesn't have an established relationship. So yeah. making him bisexual makes sense. And Tom Taylor, like, he gets it. Like, he knows. Yeah, I don't even know why they uh, specifically made him bisexual and not just gay. I mean, they Yeah, do I? Like, just I, do that. Yeah, yeah, but, um, yeah, so I thought it, I, th- it, I thought it works fine because you're not just totally skewing the history of a character. Like, Tim Drake, if Tim Drake had, like, for 20 years, had, like, subtle homosexual undertones where he's like, oh, that guy looks really cute, or whatever. And it was, like, a consistent thing among writers. Like, it was, like, a character trait rather than one writer. It was sprinkled in a little bit over time. It would have made sense. Like, like, yeah, and everyone would be like, yeah, Tim, obviously. Like, yeah, like, we we Um, knew by now. But it came to a shock to so many people because... It was like it was, it was a like, shock. Ooh, I, I don't know if that's like it's like well, he, like consistent just, with who that character is, and yeah. But John Ken absolutely yeah. makes sense. We love um, it. We love it. This yeah. is how you do it. Yeah, this is how um, you do it. Um, the character of, of Jay, um, he's he's got he, he's got a lot of, of character and personality going on. It's also like I also uh-huh. we learned a lot about him um, in this issue. In this issue, if that feels a little bit shoehorned, I will say, um, just w- yeah. with, with with Jay's character, it feels like oh, and this kind of like adding to the setup. Um, and my problem with Jay specifically is um, he feels more like um, so. For instance, like in writing and just good storytelling. The reason, like, okay, The Amazing Spider-Man, for instance. Mm -hmm. Um, The reason Gwen Stacy and Peter Parker works better in that movie than it did in the comics is because in the comics, Peter Parker was this well-developed character, but Gwen Stacy was basically just used to push Peter Parker along. Like, she was not a character. Yeah. She just was used for Peter's sake. But in, like, The Amazing Spider-Man movies, Peter's a great character, and Gwen's a great character, so we root for those two great characters to come together because mm-hmm. they're good characters in their own right. Yeah. In this, it feels more like the the former. It feels more yeah. like like Jay is used to push his yeah. political beliefs, he's his sexual orientation. Like Jay he's, is not yeah, a character. He's like everything. Um he, he's, he's not like, a character. He, he sparked the whole him 
he's going against Bendix and, and the, the dictatorship and Gamora. And now he's like, um, let's figure out yeah, his feelings. And it, like, it's like, it, it's a little bit too much. Like, he's got a lot going on, but it's, it's only geared towards John, things that yeah. make sense for John. Like, like Jay's, Jay's a, uh, a reporter a, a, a for reporter. this underground media thing. Um, but it's just so John can, like... It's just so John can, like, investigate this. Yeah, stuff. and also, like, so Jay can be like, oh my gosh, your m- mom is, like, my idol. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's... Jay isn't... A, like, but that's all... But the problem is, is those are great character traits, but we know nothing else about Jay besides the things that aid John can. In the sense of, like, yeah, we know the truth, and we know... That he's gonna obviously be bisexual or gay or whatever he is, um, but that's used again to help John's political narrative and to help his uh, hit figure out his sexual orientation. So we know nothing about Jay unless it relates to John making the characters intrinsically connected, which doesn't make Jay a strong character. Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping that maybe that gets a little eased into it. Um, I did like how uh, I d- what I will say about Jay is he was horrible for the rest of the issue, but like the first page when he's talking to um, Ma and Pa Kent, I liked, like, he was just kind of, um, like, in the first page, he's, like, asking to set up, and he's, like, oh, like, things are complicated, and he's, like, I'm from Gamora, and he's, like, talking, he's trying, you can tell he's trying to be courteous, but he's also just, like, a, a genuinely courteous person, um, but other than that, like, that's the only character who work, work he gets, so, like, it's yeah, a- so, the other characters also, like, the post-humans, they, they are popping up more in this. I love that. That, yeah. that that makes wonderful sense when, like, when writers tell a story, then use the components of that story to keep, continue the yeah, story. Yeah, it's, it's a through line that, actually, I'm really invested in. Um, um, but, yeah, overall, good issue, and uh, I'm, like, I'm fine with this. Yeah. So, if you guys thought we were homophobes, you're wrong, because we're cool with this. Like, we suggested it in the first place. Yeah. We're cool with this. This is how you do it. And, of course, it's Tom Taylor, so it's going to be written well. Now let's talk about the best written Tom Taylor series. Nightwing. Fear State Time. This was, honestly, the low point of the Nightwing series for me. Really? Interesting. Like, I'd give this, like, an 8. What? I, Are you? <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? I was, I was, re- I, I was, re- I don't know, like, I was reading this. And, Are you uh, kidding me? No, like I I don't understand. Are you kidding me? No, I'm I'm I I there was I liked it better than last issue. There was a, a big a big section here where Dick's just talking to Barbara and it feels like exposition. Well, like, yeah, because because uh, he knows nobody's reading Fierce. Yeah, State. yeah, but but. <laughs> And then we get this wonderful montage of them sneaking out yeah, as kids. The flashback was great, um, but I don't know. The first bit, I was like, "What?" It, I was like, "I just, I was not digging it." But then, you know, the fight was great, and then the fear toxin stuff was uh, I feel real like, great. I feel like, yeah, but like the, we, the fear toxin shock value thing. It, we, but we knew it wasn't gonna happen. Jesus. Yeah, I know, but like it's it's it, it, like it, and, and it ends so well. I was like, this is the first time we're seeing fear talks in, in the fear state uh, story. As well, well, that's because we're not reading it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, um, they're finally back together. Though. I do love. I love. I love um, the way the um, Tim reacts. Is yeah, that too. Like also the way Taylor uses the Bat Family. Like he's just he's so good. He's got Barbara here. Tim Drake shows up, um, and he's the voice of reason too, which is funny because he's like the little kid compared to them. Yeah, well he's he's only, yeah yeah. Well, yeah. like he, yeah, he compared to he's which, like which makes it, Tim is the most logic driven person, but he's also like. Crippled, like Maybe emotionally, emotionally crippled as well. But uh, I'll spoil it because we. Can I spoil it? Because like, Wait, skip ahead uh, thirty seconds. This? Yeah. You're, if you don't want it spoiled, because this is like the only thing to gain. It's the fear state. It's not the main Nightwing state, oh, yeah. so it doesn't matter. So uh, Babs and Dick are officially back together, which is sick. I love Coming, that. Well, not officially kiss again. It's the second time they kiss. Yeah, but like it's official now. Like, like yeah, and they kiss a couple of times. Hot. But, uh... <laughs> I want to see them bang. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, Tom Taylor would do But, like, at the, the end of this book, it says, read the Batgirl story in Batman number 116. Like, no. No. No, no. I'm not buying that book. Um, I really liked it, though. I love the... I love... I love... Honestly, the flashback made it all worth it. Like, it was so I, good. I'm digging the villain. I was just two pages really brought it down. Yeah, head. yeah. But, uh, and, and also, like... It's semi-understandable, though. 
Yeah, but like, uh, I just, just, just give me, give me the Nightwing story. Yeah, please do. We just have the like, Nightwing like, story. story. Like, this is fine, but this is like, this is not what Tom Taylor. It's just wanted. filler. He didn't even want to do this, and you can tell. Like, yeah, he does not. Some want of this, to do. some of this is 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 is, is meta. Like, like you, like, like uh, you called and I came. Um, what were yeah, it was like, uh, like, uh, oh, um, y- like you called and I and I came, and I feel like that's like. Like Tom Taylor is telling Tiny, like, listen, listen here, dude. <laughs> you you said you wanted like me to do this, or not really? I was told I have to do this, and here I am, you know. But yeah. Everything, no, it's like everything he's built in Bloodhaven, and he and in bold dropped it yeah. all the moment he thought I needed him. Yeah. Tom Taylor's like, you needed me for this shitty event, <laughs> and I dropped my <laughs> fucking goddamn story. I thought it was a, I thought it was a nine point five. Uh, it gives me eight. To be honest with you, I don't know. Just the exposition was. It, I'm just. I'm fucking sick of Fear State. Like King and Black and Daredevil. That's fine. It's a good event. It's a good series. Everything's good. But like, this is just so bad. Like, it's just, just it, fucking. It's, it, it, it didn't hold up the story. It progressed it even. Yeah, because well, you Tom, Tom Taylor was like told at the last minute. Minute, you're like, you have to write three issues, and he's like, all right, I'll just have Dick and Dick and ba- ba- Babs hanging around. Like, yeah, who cares? there's him in there. People, yeah, people <laughs> love that. Um, yeah, and he's like, he like he clearly has no plan for what's going on. He's just like, let's just have them ha- bum around the city. All right, let's talk about the real best book of the week. <sighs> Just saying the real bad. And the fact that I said that and you were just like, yeah, I know. Yeah, this, is, this was so fire. Oh, my oh God. Oh, my good Lord. Like, I don't even... I can't we're not going to talk about it at we're all. We're not going to talk about it. It was great. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. <laughs> yeah, like, this is everything you love about the Justice League. Um, Imagine if the Justice League show grew up as you grew up, and that's yeah, what it is. and everything you love about the Justice League, everything... This is just such a tight story. Everything you love about comics. Everything, this is such a tight seven-issue story. Great reveals... Great oh. action, great oh. personal moments. The ending was like, what the fuck? Yeah, that was so I, good. After I read the ending, I was like, dude. Like, what the fuck? I'm not going to show you, but like, what yeah, the fuck, dude? I, wa- I, wanted to, I wanted to text Ryan because like, I read these books before he did, and I was like, dude, you are missing out here not reading uh, <laughs> Justice League Last Ride. And you guys are missing out if you're not reading If you're not reading Last Ride. I will say, though... Because uh, I don't want to talk about it. It's 10 out of 10. You guys need to read it. It's like it's like the best thing ever. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's time. It, it's it's trade waiting time. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. It's been trade waiting for about two issues at this point. Like, you need you need to wait for the trade. I, we're going to get the trade. Because, like, I'm going to read this over and over and over. I would so say good. you should have waited. For, you should just read the whole story, like, from issue one. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think this is something that you should just, oh, I'll just pick up, I'll just read the last three issues. No. If read, you if you bought this issue, very little would make sense. So you like, gotta read the, you should, and you should be reading the entire thing. It's all, and the, it's so past the emotion. Like, the reason this hit so hard is because, and like, the issue two and three. The emotional been building, yeah, and yeah, now like, it's here. We got the emotional, the emotional cores in the earlier issues, yeah, and so. Next month is the final issue of this, which sucks. We're go- if it comes out in hardcover, like glossy pages, dude. I'm buying oh my shit gosh, out of absolutely! So I was, good. I was. It might be my favorite Justice League story ever. Oh, I, I, I comic book story printed. Um, yeah, I think it's up there. It's. I'm gonna be so because we hardly get anything that's phenomenal with the Justice League, right? Like we haven't got even Snyder's run like was the last kind of good thing. Yeah, um, and that was like that wasn't great. Jeff, or like like, like Origins was Origins, all right. New, new, it doesn't really hold up that well. Like it's cool. But like I, I every time I read it, I keep I have read it like ten times. No, yeah, me too. Every, every time I read it, I'm like, all right, I dig this. But it's like I, I look at Justice League Origins like the office of of comic books. Like you know, like where it's like, oh, what's your favorite TV show? It's like, well, it's like the office, but like, yeah, it's kind of basic. It's like it's good. Don't get me wrong, but it's not like groundbreaking. Like it's just kind of like a good story. This is like groundbreaking. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like Origins this, is yeah. just a good story. That's like, how can you fuck up an origin story? And like, it, this and, is and just this so is good. Steeped in continuity. And, Everyone and is it's... written so well. I, I like. I know. I want Chip Zdarsky on all my favorite characters, but like, this just makes me want a Chip Zdarsky Wally book more than anything else. I want a Chip Zdarsky um, Batman book. And We're getting it. One. We're getting one. In January, uh, Ryan is obviously excited. Oh, I'm excited. It looks it looks based off the Batman too. Like it's kind of that same vibe too. It, wait, speaking uh, of the Batman, there he is. Robert Pattinson could, could do anything he wants to me. What did you think of the Flash teaser? Did you watch that? You see his cowl, dude. He looked like the Lego Flash. Gary, <laughs> what did you think? 
I it, it didn't show anything. All it saw was stupid. Like, like it, I'm not it, really it look, well. Like I'm not really excited for granted, it. Granted, they didn't show us like anything, and it's not even done filming. Like, no, they, they showed us like they haven't barely even started. Like, yeah, like those like, are like the first things. As you was like, we don't have anything to show you except for like five minutes like, of footage. Like, five like, minutes like, we've actually filmed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, like, like just bits and pieces of randomness. There's no no evidence for what the story is. Something about time. It's fan service the movie, basically. Yeah. Anyway, um, I'm not excited for it. That's it for Wednesday Warriors for October 13th and 20th. Yes. I'm growing a soul patch. You shouldn't. <laughs> soul patch in the comments. If you think I should grow it, write it down. Shave it in the comments if you think you should shave it. Yeah. Soul patch or shave it. And whichever one, somebody comment it and whatever gets more likes. Hobo, um, hobo poop. Hobo poop, possibly. <laughs> All right. Hobo. Uh, that's it for Wednesday Warriors. We got more coming up. We got Carnage reviews. We got Immortal Hulk reviews. Yes. We got Superman for All Seasons reviews. We got to get Spy- The Amazing Spider-Man issue 1 through 10 review. When I go home and I pick a graphic novel out of my bookcase for what I want to read review because I... Like, I've been reading Daredevil, and we do too much Daredevil already. Yeah, I'm reading uh, Frank Miller's Daredevil. I and, I uh, just finished Yellow, and now I'm burning through Guardian Devil and Brubaker. Yeah, we have just more, we have more Daredevil, we could, more Daredevil reviews. You know that, like, it's like a joke where it's like two buttons, and it's like, read new things, or watch new things, or yeah. watch movies I've watched, read, read a hundred times already. It's like, read new comic books, Daredevil. Yeah. <laughs> we just <laughs> slap the Daredevil button. Um... <laughs> You guys should be slapping the Nightwing button, slapping the Justice League button, slapping the Iron Man button, slapping the Catwoman button. Um, and slapping that like button and the subscribe yeah, button. Yeah, and don't slap this button. This no, button. slap it in the, in the, in the, in a Eight, gross platonic like, way. Like, DC, this sold so well during the first six issues, and DC was like, Oh, people love anthologies. It's like, no. keep <laughs> doing it. And it's And they're like, like it's not oh. selling. And everyone's like, yeah, duh. <laughs> it's not, it's, it's, it's it's not selling. Let's make Tim Drake bisexual. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Um, sorry for the inconsistency. <laughs> we're trying our best. Life's whack. Uh... We're, we're finally adulting for the first time in two years, and it kind of hit us hard. So. You're still in college. That's, that's. No, like, yeah, I'm getting. putting off the adult. I'm getting what freaking whacked out all the time. About? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. No, I'm that. not. No, whacked out is in schoolwork. Like, oh. I'm whacked out from all the work. What'd you think? I didn't. And Here's thank you guys for watching. See you on the next one. I've been Chad. I've been Ryan. <laughs> We've been whacked out. <laughs>